Hi there, Brian Bram here from Eagles Wings Community Church and uh, doing a, another uh, blog post on my uh, series for Theologizing in the Emergent Church. And uh, it'll be a little less polished than some of my normal videos because uh, I've got to really refer to my notes quite a bit. And um, also, uh, uh, I, I assume it will be a little bit longer than most of, most of my uh, videos because there's a lot of content. But really wanted to talk about uh, really basically two things. Number one being uh, sort of that fifth theme that I try to talk about in each of these videos in this series, which is uh, the theme of space. And uh, then the other one will be just uh, quickly going over what I learned uh, from the interviews that I did from uh, a couple of people in the house church. So in terms of uh, space, um, there certainly were some unwritten rules in the house church, obviously, at least for a first time visitor. Um, certainly, I didn't just start wandering into the bedrooms. Uh, there were places where uh, that were, you know, on limits and, and some places that were off limits. So. Uh, nobody really told me that, but that's why we say it's an unwritten rule. So um, certainly in terms of sacredness of space, there really obviously wasn't any uh, main stage or podium or anything like that uh, that was off limits. Um, but uh, but uh, just because of that didn't mean that there weren't some places that weren't off limits. There, there definitely were some places that at least felt uh, off limits, even though nobody really had to say anything. A lot of people seem to end up either from uh, there from seminary or from somebody they knew from seminary or something. So it made me kind of wonder how wide the road was to, to house church. Um, but uh, I, I'm, I'm sure people find house churches lots of different ways other than that. Um, kids probably would be uh, an issue for some. Um, certainly the... the uh, the time that the, this particular house church met um, isn't very conducive to at least younger kids. Uh, the meeting went basically from 6 to about 8.30. Uh, our kids, for example, go to, go to bed at about 8, so that uh, uh, wouldn't work for us. So I didn't, I didn't bring my kids to this uh, particular church visit. Um, uh, aside from that, my kids have uh, some people that know me. My, some, my kids have some special needs, and... Uh, so that would make it probably a, a little less comfortable as well. Um, that isn't to say this group wasn't um, uh, willing to be accommodating. Um, I, did, I really didn't even ask, but um, I'm sure that they uh, would have been, but that'll be probably something that they'll have to kind of work out as, as they get older as a group or, or um, um, have more and more kids kind of entering the picture if that, if that happens. Maybe it won't, I don't know. Um, but uh, certainly that would have, would have presented a challenge, it seems, uh, uh, had I brought my kids. Um, well, so some other things that we learned, uh, uh, that I learned from, from the, uh, the visit. Um, I would say that there, there wasn't a lot of diversity in terms of ethnic diversity. There was some, um, but it wasn't very much. Uh, it didn't seem to represent um, the area, so... Uh, for whatever reason, uh, it, it led me to question whether the house church model is reaching um, uh, some of the ethnic minorities. Uh, it, was, it was largely a Caucasian meeting. Um, aside from that, some of the questions that I asked uh, some, of the, uh, some of the members that I would touch on um, is uh, they, they uh, and, and the questions that I asked, by the way, uh, really were stemming out of what I knew to sort of be important um, to uh, folks in the emergent church. Um, so like, for example, I'm not going to sit here and say, you know, here's the question I asked uh, for every single one. But one of the questions that I asked is how often people in their church are encouraged to study uh, and interpret scripture on their own, because uh, in especially mainline, uh, very old denominations, uh, it's, it's uh, gotten to be sort of a passive event for uh, people that go to church. They kind of go and, and uh, just sort of listen, um, and it's really up to the main leaders and teachers to do the interpreting and then just to give the information, and then they kind of memorize the information and, and uh, take it from there. So... Um, Whereas in the emergent church, obviously, that is uh, very, uh, very much changed. It's uh, their, their, their idea, uh, which I think is a good one, uh, is that we should all be uh, 
um, studying scripture and and attempting to uh, do a good job interpreting. So, um, so in in the house church though, the the general consensus was that they're uh, very often one 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 of the interviewees actually said every single week. So, uh, which which I I think is probably true. Um, so that was one thing uh, to kind of observe. Um, some other things, uh, uh, in terms of likes and dislikes or uh, challenges, uh, uh, I think is uh, one of the ways that one of the interviewees wanted to sort of reframe, and I thought, um, I thought that was probably uh, a pretty good uh, thing to kind of mention, uh, rather than saying, what, what don't you like? Um, uh, he would rather uh, put it in terms of challenges rather than dislikes. Um, the flexibility was certainly something uh, that they uh, tended to like. Um, sometimes they would come with an agenda, uh, but eventually sort of get off, or maybe right from the right from the get go, something would come up. Maybe somebody had a, a sort of a a big need, um, they needed some help or some counseling or something, or the ear of the other people in the group, and so sometimes there there was an agenda that kind of went away based on. Um, what was kind of going on at the time, uh, and in some ways, I think that's uh, uh, that's absolutely wonderful, uh, and it's probably pretty hard for a large uh, a large uh, church to do that. Uh, I would say probably likely something much different would happen in in that situation. Uh, probably they would sort of be taken to the side or something, and the agenda would kind of go on uh, for all the rest of the uh, attendees. Um, so flexibility was was one thing, uh, v being very welcome um, and having, um, or welcoming I should say, and having uh, very authentic relationships uh, was uh, definitely a strength that uh, uh, these folks seemed to enjoy about the house church. Uh, some of the challenges that they had, um, sometimes it was uh, uh, reported anyways that they would kind of uh, get together sometimes and, and uh, maybe it's kind of an off night for people in terms of uh, participation and so they end up kind of staring at, it, at each other. Um, and uh, certainly that was, a, uh, the conversation the night that I was there seemed to, uh, to flow well enough, um, but it wasn't a particularly insightful uh, conversation, which I kind of report in my blog. And, um, and that's fine. Um, but if that happens, I think, too often, uh, at least somebody like myself would probably shy away from that, at least. Um, so uh, those were, that, those, that was probably one of the bigger, one of the bigger challenges. Um, another challenge uh, that was uh, reported is that uh, a lot, it seems, at least in this particular group, that a lot of the people work in social justice uh, in their regular, you know, sort of nine to five jobs. Um, and uh, so they would sort of get tired, um, and uh, it sort of weighs on you after a while, um, and uh, can get a little bit exhausting. And so sometimes they would have uh, a little more of a challenge uh, getting people to um, have the time to prepare uh, uh, if they were sort of uh, in charge of leading the group for that week, um, and. Uh, um, maybe even uh, uh, helping to prepare the meal or buying the food. And uh, so um, exhaustion seemed to be a little bit maybe of a, of a challenge as well. Um, the flip side, I think, on the positive side of that challenge is that it, it, it certainly lets you know that these folks are uh, very engaged uh, in, their, in their community um, to have that kind of uh, exhaustion. Um, then other, other uh, sort of challenges that I wouldn't worry too much about, um, perception of others um, outside of, of the house church, um, in terms of perceiving that maybe they aren't Christians or um, those kinds of things. I, I just wouldn't worry about those things too much, um, but those were some of the other things that uh, I suppose it can get annoying. Um, they're doing a great job of, of reaching out to the community, obviously. They, they do lots of other events as well, such as uh, neighborhood barbecues. Uh, I thought it was kind of interesting. One of the uh, interviewees talked about um, those events leading to sort of a neighborhood awareness that their house was a safe place um, for people 
kids or anybody to go to. Um, and uh, that, uh, that was very impressive, I thought. Um, some, some other things they've done, they've purchased a computer for somebody in need, paid the first month's rent for, for a neighbor. Uh, they've done some community uh, meals and picnics and such. Um, so all great ways that they uh, are very uh, connected and involved in, in their immediate community and then they're very uh, also involved in a, a much wider community uh, all throughout the world really um, by doing sponsorships of uh, uh, churches and schools uh, I think in Rwanda if I'm not mistaken but uh, somewhere overseas they're, they're doing that um, and uh, so lots of impressive ways that they're, that they're contributing to the community some of the unwritten rules um, are uh, that basically somebody has to be willing to listen uh, and self-regulate. Uh, sometimes when they feel that fiery comment uh, brewing, they'll, they'll have to kind of temper that and try to see where the other person is coming from. Um, and uh, uh, a heavy emphasis on discussing and not fighting um, is sort of an unwritten rule. Uh, listen and ask questions more than talk. Uh, and it seems like uh, apparently some, some who have a little more struggle with that maybe don't sort of last in the, in the house church model. Um, one thing that I, I'm a little bit leery of is that there was some mention, mention of um, uh, everyone's interpretation and what does this mean for our community. And um, uh, I'm a little, I'm a little uh, uncomfortable with some of that. Um, everyone's interpretation um, just because of the particular way I guess that I that I approach um, hermeneutics uh, and if you don't know what that is it's it's on a different blog on my blog site but um, I would push back a little bit on on that I think um, which is probably one of the sort of downsides that I see uh, in the house church model um, and it is just just that kind of um, sort of wondering who who is uh, what do you do if you end up with uh, a group that's um, you know maybe largely uneducated or something and then uh, but alas I mean uh, heresy can can come in large churches as well and then it affects you know thousands of people but um, so, but anyways, it's just a, a concern that I would have, uh, well, really for the church as a whole. But um, anyways, I'm getting off on a tangent there, but um, uh, everyone is expected to uh, contribute. That's another sort of unwritten rule. Have sensitivity towards people and, and try to find people's strengths. Uh, I thought those were some excellent, uh, excellent comments. Um, one... Uh, 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 other couple other uh, sort of observations um, is that there was this unwritten rule that um, not only were were they expected to be tolerant in terms of other people's opinions but behaviorally as well um, they uh, they have welcomed in a homeless person into their group uh, which I thought was great especially the way that they they treated that individual um, but they did lose some people when when they welcomed that person in uh, they've also in the past uh, welcomed in people with Asperger's um, and uh, in, those, in those times sometimes they've had situations where people have become frustrated and left. Um, but uh, once again, I, I don't know that they should really worry too much about that. Um, I think that uh, hopefully those people that leave uh, will find a place that uh, is, is good for them. Um, but I think... Uh, I think that's sort of the culture of this group, and I and I and I hope they don't lose it. So, um, overall, a great experience in the house church. Um, I, uh, for my own self, I, I saw plenty, way more, way more strengths than weaknesses in the house church. Um, and uh, certainly, if uh, I think I say this in my blog, if if uh, some of that sparks an interest for for anyone. Um, definitely reach out to me and I, I would love to, to point you towards uh, uh, this particular house church because uh, it, was a, it was a great experience. So uh, check out the blog and uh, blessings to you.